of NDSU Extension. Today we are going to learn how to make basic scrambled eggs. You can follow along with your recipe. Eggs are a great food to have for breakfast, meals, or even a snack because they're extremely nutritious and they're very affordable. Eggs only cost between 15 to 20 cents a piece and they are loaded with a high quality protein that helps build muscle. They also give us many other nutrients and are considered one of our most complete foods. So, following this recipe to make the scrambled eggs, your recipe says it needs four large eggs. I'm going to half this recipe. So, I will need, first off, two eggs. And eggs come in a variety of sizes, but a nice general size egg to use is the large. So I've already washed my hands for 20 seconds, which you should do the same. And I am going to put the two eggs into this large glass measuring cup and discard the eggs into my garbage bowl. And if you happen to get a little bit of shell into your bowl, a helpful trick you can do is take the shell of the egg and actually scoop it out. This will cut through the egg very easily and is much easier to do than using a spoon or your fingers. Okay, the next ingredient needed says one fourth cup milk. Well, we're having the recipe. So a fourth a cup is the same as four tablespoons. So I am going to do roughly two tablespoons of milk. You could use water if you don't have milk or a milk replacement. Then it calls for a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. But you know what? In most homes, we don't have salt in a container. So I'm just going to put a couple sprinkles of each in. You can doctor it up with more if you would like. Okay. I have the burner on and I'm careful to put the fry pan with the handle in towards me rather than like that so I don't trip over it. When I have it warm enough, I have the choice of using two different kinds of non-stick um, ingredients. I could use a non-stick cooking spray or like your recipe calls for, I could use a small amount of butter or margarine. To follow the recipe, I will use butter in this case. So I will put about one teaspoon of butter on the bottom of the pan. And I will let that warm up while I do the next step. I need to whisk these ingredients together. And this is a whisk. If you don't have a whisk at home, which some of you may not, you can use a fork. So there's ways around it. When we whisk the egg, mix with the milk, salt, and pepper, we do it until everything's blended together. That looks about right. Okay, now I'm going to use my turner. And when we cook eggs, we usually cook them over a lower heat. I would say around a medium level heat. And I'm going to pour my eggs into the pan. And when we do this, we gently are going to pull from the side to the center to cook the scrambled eggs. We don't want to over mix them because we still want them to have some shape and form. So once I pull this, at some point I can almost fold them over and we want to cook them until they're no longer runny. Now my family likes to put shredded cheese on their eggs. Sometimes we'll put salsa, cut up um, onions or peppers. Scrambled eggs can be doctored many different ways to what your family's tastes are. So you can see this, I'm going to gently fold it over. And I would say that we're about half ways done. My pan is using a non-stick cooking pan, so it doesn't stick very much, which is nice. But 
but when they're no longer runny, then they are finished. Maybe you like hot, hot sauce in your scrambled eggs as well. So this says continue cooking, pulling, lifting, and folding eggs until thickened and no visible egg remains. Do not stir constantly. Then we remove from heat and serve immediately. Remember when you're in the kitchen to always turn your stove off for safety reasons when you are finished. And you'll notice because my heat was only on about a medium, it's not overly browned. It's still nice and soft. And it's looking like my scrambled eggs are about finished. So I'm going to turn my heat off. And now it's time to enjoy these scrambled eggs. See you next time. Hey guys, my name is Aspen Lenning. I'm working with NDSU Extension. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make cloud eggs. So you should have gotten your recipe. Um, it's pretty easy to follow along with, but I'm just going to show you so you have a little more of the basics. So like always, I started with washed hands. I started with clean surfaces. Everything's laid out so that I'm ready to rock and roll. I did a couple of things in advance just so that the video is shorter because I'm sure you don't want to watch me whip eggs for five minutes. So I'm going to start with my eggs. I'm going to follow the recipe and I'm going to do two. So you're going to crack your egg. This is where it gets a little tricky because you're going to separate your egg, which means that you're going to have your white and your yolk. And there's a couple different ways to do this. I like to take it and you just kind of swish it back and forth between the shells a couple of times. And then you end up with the yolk right there. I'm going to put that in a separate bowl. You have to be really gentle because if not, just like exactly what I just did, the yolk is going to break. Not a big deal. We'll fix it in a minute and we'll do better with our second one. So another way, if you don't want to do this method, it is kind of tricky. And I, who have done this many, many times, just screwed up because the egg shell is pretty jaggedy on the side. You can just dump the whole egg in a bowl and take a spoon, just put it, separate it. You can use your hands. I like this method because it just gets all dirty. So what we're going to do next is we're going to whip our eggs. So basically what we're going to be doing is making a meringue. Um, this is really popular with like French kind of fancy things. They put sugar in it, all sorts of stuff like that. I'm just going to start it here just to kind of show you what to do. So I'm going to use the electric hand mixer because this really makes your life a lot easier. But you can use a whisk. You can use a non-electric hand mixer. You can even use a fork. It really depends on how much of a workout you want to get with this. I just want to kind of get these ready to go. mix and mix and mix and mix until it looks like that. So you can kind of see how the egg whites got all nice and fluffy and they hang. And then in the bowl, you can see if you dig in here and pull it up, there's a stiff peak and that's exactly what you want. So what you're going to do next is set this aside, take a spoon, and you're going to make your cloud eggs. So I took half of my recipe and already have it in the oven just to save some time, but you'll make two mounts. I'm just gonna make one. Set it right on the pan. Kind of spread it around a little bit. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a little hole because you're gonna put your egg yolk there in a little bit. Set this aside. And then you're gonna put it in the oven at 450 degrees for three minutes. is put my yolk in with my cloud. So you're going to take your spoon again. I'm going to rinse it off quick. Can't quite make that seam shut off today. <laughs> and I'm going to carefully grab my yolk and put it in the middle. Then this goes back in the oven for three minutes. oven we can talk about a little bit 
of variations that you can do with this. So your recipe actually says that you can add just different kind of cheeses, so Swiss or Parmesan. I've done that in the past and it definitely adds to it. And then in addition to that, you can add different spices and herbs. You can add salt and pepper. You can really do whatever you want here. Um, I would love to see if you guys do anything different. Um, see what you guys like. I, when I make it at home, definitely add the cheese. It's awesome. And what you would do is way back here when you had your original cloud, you would take your cheese, add it in, just fold it a couple of times, really gentle, and then put it on the sheet and everything else is the same. So the total cook time for this is six minutes. So it really doesn't take a whole lot of time. Um, they look pretty fancy. So if there's like Mother's Day or someone's birthday, it's pretty fun to make and pretty easy. The hardest part and the most dangerous part is gonna be when we take it out of the oven. So you always wanna make sure you have your oven mitts and you have a good safe place to put it. You never wanna put a hot pan on something like plastic, it'll melt. Been there, done that. Something else I wanted to mention I just found this out like a year ago, and I should have known this a long time ago. Parchment paper, safe for the oven. Great stuff. You don't have to do as many dishes. Things don't stick as much. Versus wax paper, also a great tool. It helps prevent sticking. Um, it's good for things that don't go in the oven. But this stuff in the oven will start on fire, so don't do it. Been there, done that, learn from my mistake. So. I'm going to pull that cloud egg out and we're going to take a look at it. So here's our cloud egg. If you like it runny, then just leave it like this, <laughs> really running around. Um, if you don't like it runny, that's perfectly okay. Just take a fork, break the yolk, put it back in the oven a little bit longer and it'll be harder. I like it this way because it's like the egg has its own sauce. Anyway, this is our cloud egg. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, my name is Trish Jessen with NDSU Extension. Today we are going to hard boil eggs. You can follow along with your recipe. It says the perfect hard cooked eggs. What makes this recipe unique is rather than boiling for so many minutes, we actually bring a pot of water to a boil, we put a lid on, set it aside for around 15 minutes, and this method of cooking can help prevent the egg from getting the green color, which is a chemical reaction from heating too quickly and cooling. But when we cook this way, our hard boiled egg, it can help prevent that green color. And it's really easy. So we are going to hard boil a couple eggs. Eggs are extremely nutritious, a high protein source, and they're also very affordable. So what we're going to need is the size pan, based on how many eggs you're going to hard boil. The first step says to place the eggs in a single layer in the pan. I'm going to remind you that our hands should always be clean with a 20 second hand wash and make sure that your kitchen surfaces are also clean for food safety reasons. So we are going to hard boil two eggs. So they're in a single layer on the pan and it says to add cold water to the pan, covering them so there's one inch of water, giving it enough water to fully cook them. So I have about that much water above the eggs. Then it says to place them over a high heat. So I'm going to turn it to about between um, high and medium high. Careful so it doesn't boil over. And when we want water to boil quicker, we can put a lid on top and that can help speed how fast it is to come to a boil. Now I have this one already showing what level of boil we want to work towards. It should be a full rapid boil before we start timing. This would be considered a rapid boil because the bubbles are rising to the top quickly. So once this is completely a rapid boil, it says that we are to turn the heat off remove it from the heat, and then I will set a timer for 20 or 15 minutes. If you want your eggs set even firmer, you could let them sit longer, or if you want them to not be cooked as much, perhaps even a little less. Okay, so I set the timer. 
Once the timer goes off, what we do to remove them is we take a slotted spoon and we can carefully get them out and we place them in a bowl or a container of cold water to cool them. This one I boiled ahead of time. And so I will show our hard cooked or our perfect hard cooked egg. And what we can do is crack it a couple different ways. You could tap it and peel. And it's actually peeling with ease because it was placed in that cold water after boiling. And what I like to do to make sure that all the shell is removed from the egg is I like to run, put it under running water. In this case, I'll just do this because nobody wants to bite into shell. And there is my perfect hard cooked egg that can be sliced, eaten plain, and enjoyed. This is our perfect hard cooked egg. Hi there, I'm Ellen Bialin with the NDSU Extension Service here in Ward County. And today we're going to learn about frying eggs. Now, pretty much every Saturday or Sunday, I find myself a couple of eggs for my morning breakfast. And I, there's a couple different methods that I've used and we're gonna talk about both of those today. But before you do anything in the kitchen, what do you need to do? You need to wash your hands. So I'm gonna say that I have washed my hands and we are ready to roll because I have washed my hands, okay? So the first method, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about equipment too. This particular pan is a cast iron skillet and it is actually seasoned, meaning it's been covered in oil, baked in the oven, and now it's pretty much non-stick. So that's, uh, this is probably my favorite egg pan. We're gonna talk about another method in a minute. Now, whenever you um, cook with eggs, you have some choices as to fat that you use. Most of the time, I prefer just a couple little sprays of cooking spray. So that's what I'm gonna do here today. Even though my pan is pretty much non-stick, and obviously I have my eggs all heated here for my stove all heated here. All right, I always uh, crack my eggs into a bowl before I put them into the pan. And there's a couple reasons for doing that. One is to make sure that there's no blood spots in the egg. Not that they'll hurt you any, but for, for maybe you don't want a blood spot. And then I just slide it in. So I'm going to turn it way down and put the lid on. So this first method, I'm going to actually use a tiny bit of water in here. And here we go. And just a tiny bit is all you need. Basically, we are steaming our fried egg with this method. So this method creates an egg which has a runny yolk. Now maybe you don't like a runny yolk, so that'll be our next method of cooking. All right. You probably can't see this very well, but my white is set and the yolk is still runny. Okay, that's our one method. Grab my, let's see here. Remove that. Now I'm going to use a different fry pan. Now this is a non-stick fry pan, which is ideal for making eggs. So we're going to heat it up. And this is our second method. So this is if you don't like to have a runny yolk. We're going to talk about you know, flipping it over and making it into something a little more solid and the yolk will be. So again, I'm going to just hit my fry pan a little bit here. Break an egg. Oops. Into my bowl. Okay. And I'm going to slide this in here. I'm going to wait for it to start cooking. I 
actually put the and the heat on medium. Now we try to cook eggs because they're a protein on low to medium. You notice they started off pretty high with the other one. This one I'm going to put it only on medium because I don't want to um, damage the protein. So it's cooking. I'm going to wait until it starts to set. And that would be the, the white part of it setting. Doing pretty well here. And at this point, you can also add some seasoning if you like. I'm pretty much just a salt and pepper kind of gal on my eggs, so throw a little dab on. Probably more pepper than salt. Okay. All right. I don't know if you can see this, but it's now starting to set up. And this is when I take my spatula and flip it over. And now we're going to let it cook a little bit longer until the yolk is set. Now, however long you, you cook it at this point is how you get over easy, over medium, or over hard. And over hard means that the yolk is hard and set. So I'm going to try to make mine over medium. This non-stick skillet works really well. Other than to flip it, I really don't even need this turner. Okay, plate over here. I'm gonna just slide it off. So in this case, we've got an over medium egg. Let me show it to you. You can see that in these cases, the yolks are different colors. So one is more orange versus this one. All right, the two methods of frying an egg, both of them work really well and depending on what kind of egg you like, you can do them both. All right, thanks. See you again.